an interesting anchorage. For some reason we were getting a sort of mixed current so we were pirouetting the whole night. If you look at our track we were sort of going around in circles and uh, like we're at Cape um, we have two sets of water meeting each other and that's kind of what's happening down there. So although it was, um, it was actually a safe anchorage I wouldn't call it comfortable and these winds are going to continue today. You can probably hear in the background they're blowing a good 20 or so knots, 20 up to 25 knots because we've got so much wind we don't need to put much sail out the usual stay sail mizzen this is getting the lines ready millie's nice and relaxed in the corner there and uh, yeah apart from a couple of reefs uh, we have to get over the top of uh, luyong uh, the islands where we met keith and then across and that's where it's going to be a little bit hairy because uh, there's quite a bit of fetch coming through there but it's short um, and then we're going to explore a new area and hope there isn't quite as much in the way of wind and fetch gone on the winds got stronger and stronger and we're now in the middle uh, of Inambus where we thought we would find some shelter but getting 25 27 but it's a matter of finding somewhere that is shallow, shallow enough to an anchor um, and that hasn't got fishing platforms everywhere so we just tried somewhere but there was a bommy and it was just all too little difficult so we're now trying to go a little bit further Going towards uh, Tarempa, where there, sh there should be or there could be some protection, but just looking, I'm not sure there will be, but we'll see what happens next. No doubt you can hear the wind behind me whipping away through this little uh, channel here. We found a spot to anchor and if I put an overlay over the top as I describe this place it's utterly ridiculous. There's no way you could get in here without serious eyeballing and uh, good vision of the reefs or satellite image which is actually what we ended up using. So we are uh, north of this little island that we actually anchored um, off two years ago. We attempted to anchor there again just now and uh, the fetch coming through up this channel is pretty vicious, as is the wind. But we came round and there's a little reef that sticks out and there's a kind of funny little bay. Uh, we ended up in 15 metres, uh, no fetch whatsoever, but still, of course, strong winds, uh, both this kind of sustains 25 knots, plus the old catabatic. We're only 60 metres away from the reef to the north of us which uh, always makes us feel a little nervous, but um, we've got our track on, snubbers on, uh, firmly dug in that anchor, it's all good so far. So hopefully the wind is going to calm down later this evening.
And so next morning, the wind has calmed, it's died down. There's still a bit of a breeze, back to our usual sort of 10 to 15 knots, I think it will be, but uh, at least we don't have that sustained 20 plus knots at the moment. So today's gonna be an interesting one. I don't think we're gonna be sailing because it's actually a short hop, but it's a short hop through some of the tightest coral reefs. There's a track already through there by the Howarths, thank you very much, the Howarths. And I've double checked it on our satellite imagery as well, just to make sure that they correlate and make sense. No new coral reefs that have grown since their track as if it's going to be very careful maneuvering lots of eyeballing and sticking rigidly to the course it's basically it's just over there it's behind that uh, island just there so it's not too far away at all but it should be an interesting one and uh, since first eyeing up the Anambus two three years ago I remember looking at this particular area and thinking how scary this looks um, but with a bit of careful navigation we should be good be interested to see what's on the other side as well So here we are, open bay. All looks fairly innocuous, doesn't it? I've noticed we've already got quite a bit of current uh, running along our beam, which could be make it uh, quite interesting trying to navigate through that tight reef. But at the moment, you can see it's all fairly open. But uh, just over there is where the reefs start. One of the reasons, of course, why we've left now and not earlier is to get uh, good visibility so the sun is out the higher up it is, the better it is for spotting those reefs. We're actually you're filming us right at the uh, the trickiest point. It's like a sort of this shape, an S shape. Uh, it's all going okay so far. There's a little bit of current that pushes the boat, but not too much. The main concern is a fishing boat coming this way, but it's only little. I wonder if we'll pass port to port. Do they know that here? Looks like we are. Um, but the, clear, the the reefs are very clear. You can see them quite clearly. Uh, depth 10 meters or more. It's very close this fishing boat. Um, but uh, yeah, all okay so far. Bit of indecision going on here. I've decided what to do. Checked out this little island and then thought, now nah, let's go a, a further afield. Can't agree on anything so we've decided to come back to this island because on the uh, west side it's pretty protected. A little bit of current running through but uh, it's pretty flat calm water and uh, there's a little beach on the island and curiously two jetties that stick out that protect a reef. Don't know what that's about but uh, if we can anchor by it we'll go ashore and explore. has dropped me off at the island while he goes to hunt for some coral. We didn't really see anything on the way over here from the boat. 
Uh, it's a little disappointing because uh, it looks so turquoise and there were lots of patches and we thought, oh, that looks like coral, but I don't know. Let's see what he discovers. On the island, we have got um, a wall that's been built along the shore here, quite a substantial wall with two walkways on it. And behind me, uh, you might be able to see these trees have been planted. They've got uh, little circles of stones around the bottom. So obviously some kind of effort has been going on with this island. Don't know, can't see any sign of life. There's no buildings or anything. Uh, it's all very quiet here. I'm a little disappointed actually. I thought it was going to be better than this. <laughs> but it's still very beautiful, of course. Um, the beach has got some really nice clam shells all over it washed up and uh, lots of shells and everything but unfortunately like a lot of areas the South China Sea has thrown up all kinds of detritus we've got children's shoes I don't know how many children go out there with one shoe on but there's loads on this beach um, plastic bags plastic bottles straws all the usual culprits are all here marring the beauty of what should be a really beautiful island but anyway making the best of it and it's not bad really and sitting here on this rock I'm just looking out over the east and it's really beautiful. thinking about it this is prime real estate I was talking to Cam the other day about this perverse fascination with working out which of these resorts or which of these islands would make good resorts this is clearly uh, got a lot of potential mainly because it is protected on this side You've got the little channel we came through earlier which takes you through towards Terempa so a nice easy passage from Terempa the capital town um, and obviously enough land to build hotels and a big enough beach that you could keep your clientele pretty happy. Lots of coconut trees here and clearly no one picking them up because the ground is littered with uh, brown coconut husk and up in the coconut trees you've got fresh coconut growing in different states, oranges and greens. What a waste, eh? Look at this. Hundreds of them. Of course, perversely, if a man were to develop this island, they would have to be responsible for clearing up some of the, all of the crap on this beach. This is actually the worst that I have seen in the Anambas. Um, it's pretty horrific. So many plastic bottles and lots of uh, polystyrene, you know, food cartons, which clearly have been blown across and have got caught up in all the bushes around here but uh, this is definitely the worst I've ever seen and I guess that's the one advantage of developing somewhere like this is that uh, the local authorities have to be more responsible for keeping their beaches clean so whilst on the one hand you have an influx of tourism uh, on the other hand you know they might take in a bit more responsibility over these islands I mean the thing is at the moment because it's uninhabited no one lives here so whose responsibility is it to look after it? And then in among all this filth you've got these beautiful butterflies flying around this bush in pairs. I've no idea what they are, if anyone can help me identify them. Quite difficult to capture on the compact camera. Uh, but they're black with a yellow horizontal stripe across uh, their back ends, their hind end. Absolutely beautiful and they're just they're a mirror image of each other, just copying each other flying between the bushes here.
So we've done the first tricky bit and yeah. speed went down to less than two knots for quite some way actually. And uh, now we've got uh, another track which we've not done before which is similar in that it's going through quite a few reefs and bommies. Uh, again the Howarths, thank you very much, have got a route through it. Um, one or two look a bit suspect, the waypoints they've put in, they look like they go over reefs or at least maybe a, a shallower water anyway. But uh, we'll find out in a minute, we're going to turn to starboard and go up the channel towards Tarempa. Wish us luck. <laughs> 